is Brent Mark. I'm out of Naperville, Illinois. Uh, it's my 2020 Ram Rebel. Bought the truck December of 2019. Mechanical engineer by trade, I gotta keep my mind going. So projects on my truck are the way to do it. So pretty much every project on my truck has a video on my YouTube channel where I walk through the how-to step-by-step process. I started looking at the Rebel and I thought, man, the Rebel's awesome because it gives me um, gives me the ability to leave it stock for a while, which is a, a huge issue with me. I can't leave something alone. So with the Rebel, you get basically the whole package right from the factory. You get an awesome looking truck on the outside. The interior looks great. The red trim, everything pops in the truck. You can't beat the interior on the 2019 and newer Rams. You could look at all the other trucks and the exterior, they all have cool things about them but the interior on the Ram just, at that time, just stuck out to me. So at roughly 1,000 miles, I started adding parts onto it, and then one thing led to another and just kind of spiraled out of control. Good morning, everyone. Waterfaller41 here, and in today's video, we are replacing the tunnel cover on my 2020 Ram Rebel. I had a lot of fun doing the installation of parts pre-YouTube channel and then at some point I said you know these are a lot of fun and I like spending a lot of time in my garage so why not take it to the next step and start filming the installs because that way I could post it on the channels I could share it on the forums and hopefully help out people who are doing the same sort of projects got everything done closed everything cinched down so the reason why I got rid of my rugged liner cover and went with the X thing all right, so we'll start at the front of the truck and kind of make our way back. So the front of the Ram, uh, these are originally silver letters. These actually have overlays from a company called TVD Vinyls. Uh, and kind of while we're on the overlay topic, the fog lights are yellow overlays from a company called Laminex. My, son, my youngest son helped me install those in one of my videos. Fog light and then it, gets, it tapers off in the end. So the next thing I'm going to do is take Raptec. So give me the sticky stuff. Yep, that. So I'm going to take Raptec. And then I'm just gonna, that's all you need. Um, then looking at the front, I have a lower 20 inch light bar down here. So this is an OZ USA light bar. That's tied in on the same circuit as my A-pillar LED pods. Those are mounted to the A-pillars with the Z-Roads brackets. And then as far as control, so down inside here is my Bluetooth trigger four plus controller. So this is the reason why I wanna have my phone mounted up by the steering wheel, because my phone will talk with the Bluetooth device inside here, and that's what controls all my lights. So my A-pillars, my 20-inch in the back, in the front, and then my rear LEDs are all controlled by this device right here. So click of a button through an app on my phone and everything's good to go. Then kind of moving towards the side of the truck. Uh, these are Duraflap mud flaps, so it's a company out of uh, Utah, I believe. And I've had these on all my trucks. I got the extra long ones on this because I have full intentions on lifting the truck eventually. I want to make sure I got the coverage. Getting into the side of the truck, we got DZ running boards. So these are DZ NXT running boards. They're nice and low profile and they hug the side of the truck. So um, they stuck out to me because I live in the salt belt. So aluminum survives a little bit better than the steel running boards. So I ended up going with these and they match the truck nicely as far as aggressive. Um, looking on the interior, the first thing you'll see is my Wetacole seat covers. So again, I've had these on all three sets of, or all three trucks that I've had. My Ford, my GMC, and now my Ram. Um, I have these, one, because they look great, and don't get me wrong, the Rebel interior looks awesome as it is. There's a lot of cool embroidering, but when you have kids and a dog, seats tend to get beat up, so the Wetacole seat covers are waterproof and they'll protect it a little bit better than uh, just having the plain leather. So then we got our Pro Clip mount right here, and like I said, it's pretty simple to, to operate my uh, Switch app without even moving my hand. If my phone's not in there, my, my auxiliary switches are right here, and these are wireless, so there's no wires run between here and the cab. These just talk to the same controller that my phone talks to. I've been using ProClip for a long time. I'll say 100% of the parts that I install in my truck, I look for two-way parts. So basically I can install them and I can remove them and it's almost like they weren't even there. Uh, so that's what stuck out about the Pro Clip is I can install it and if I ever need to move it out of the truck, I can pull it out and it's, it leaves no mark, there's no holes, there's nothing from it. 
The reason why I needed to install it is when I installed all the lighting, I had to find a location for the switch panel. So the switch panel actually ended up mounting really nicely in one of the OEM cell phone holders way down in the center console. So that ended up eating a cell phone position. So installing the Pro Clip allowed me to put the, uh, my phone a little bit more accessible to me. And because I'm using the trigger for Bluetooth controller for my lights, I could then control my lights from my phone. So I could have my hands on the steering wheel and I could just tap the lights on and off instead of having to reach down below, search for the buttons and flip them on and off. So it's nice when you're driving on the road and if it's really dark out, you can flip the lights on. Then if you got something coming, you can flip them off if need be. So it really put the phone in an accessible location. Um, so I'm not searching around the truck. I mean, the Rams are a massive console. It's easy to lose stuff in there. I lost my own car keys in that console. I don't want to put any more stuff in there that I don't have to. So. By utilizing the Pro Clip up on the dash, it gave me that accessibility, but also knew where my phone was 24 7. So, then as far as stereo upgrades, all the doors have infinity reference speakers, and then they're tied in with a five channel Alpine amp that's connected to an LC7i line output converter. And then, my pride and joy of my truck uh, is a custom subwoofer box I built, and it's not really, it's not a perfect box, but um, my youngest son helped me paint it. So he gets in the truck, that's what he looks at. He, that's the boom box when he sits down in the seat. So uh, yeah, a lot of fun kind of building out the stereo. Um, and gets the job done for my application. But also, what a cool AC covers in the back as well. Again, this is where you really need them because the kids are messy. There's no way around that. So then as far as kind of coming to the rear of the truck, uh, an X-Thang Encore tunnel cover, way, way, way too much research went into picking out this cover. I had a few prior to this. But this one ended up working out real well with my application. I like the hard fold-up covers. Um, obviously, you have the WeatherTech step. But here's the, the rear LEDs. These are from a company called Z-Roads again. Uh, custom brackets to fit up underneath the bumper. Um, they fit real well with my 5-inch exhaust tips. So these exhaust tips are from a company called B2 Fabrication. And those are the ones that I had custom powder coated to match the rest of the uh, bumper rear, just kind of blend in a little bit. And those are attached to a Cook's exhaust system. And then way down underneath the truck is the PML differential cover. So that's in that red textured uh, powder coat and it's outlined with a Roadmaster sway bar. So it's a rear sway bar that's about a uh, quarter of an inch to a half an inch larger than the factory sway bar, but it's to level out the truck uh, in turn. So to keep it kind of planted. But yeah, more to come. There's a lot more going on on this truck that I have plans for kind of heading down the right direction, I think so far. started seeing how much work I started putting in a truck, I said, all right, I got a vision and that's where I'm going to go and that's where I'll take all my channel videos to. I'm not just going to throw any part I can get on this thing. I have a, a goal, a flag at the end of the road that I'm going to kind of run towards on this one. It's funny now when I'm doing truck projects, and even if I'm not filming a video, if you just see my feet dangling out from underneath my truck and I'm doing something and I hear my kids riding by on their bikes with their friends, their friends will come up and say, are you filming a video? Are you filming a video? What are you installing today? And which is awesome getting into those videos and trying to incorporate them a lot more on my channel is, it's a lot of fun because it keeps them busy and constructive and with sitting around the house and the summer has been kind of a drag um, it gives them something beyond the screen to do and you know i grew up working on cars so they get the advantage too i also like the truck because it's easy just to throw the kids in there grab the fishing poles and just head out so we fish a lot um, either by myself or with the kids or now with their friends, but I like driving around. We'll find a pond, we'll just post up there. They're, I'm working on getting them out of using the big lures and getting back to the bobber worm just so they can catch some fish, but yeah, they have a blast fishing.
So yeah, I guess in, in, in my opinion, RC cars are kind of an awesome gateway into the car area because you could drive them, you could break them, and $15 later you could repair them and you get right back on the road. So um, that's kind of the joke we have right now is I have an RC car that my youngest was driving and he ran it right into a tree. So both control arms are broken and I have the control arm sitting there and it's just a matter of finding time to fix it up. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of how I hope to kind of push them into the car world.